Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. I took a short break from the channel last week with no new video for the first time in quite a while, but I'm back this week with the next instalment of Cover Tape Chaos Zapped. We're up to episode 21 this time and a tape that came with issue 76 of Zap. Turbocharge is the cover star this time around and it really is an amazing game that I actually reviewed for an episode of my very short lived C64 review show a few years ago. It's still on the channel if you want to go back and watch it but I'll just say here that this was the game that Chase HQ should have been and demonstrates that the bread bin did have the power to do the concept justice all along. It just took someone like Chris Butler to make a decent game out of it. Also in this issue there is a full review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day the latest ocean adaptation of a huge blockbuster film. I remember it being okay, but by then the formula was starting to feel a little tired. Let's get stuck into the tape offerings though, shall we? This time around, all full games on the tape are full games, there's no demos to be found here. I'm going to start with Bounces from Denton Designs, which is a strange alternative sports game where you control either a medieval knight or a viking and attempt to bounce a rubber ball into one of your opponent's three goals. To complicate things, each player is tied to a stretchy bungee cord and is supplied with a non-fatal weapon in which to knock down the other player. This is also an alternative method of scoring points. Matches play out over two halves that are 90 seconds long, with the two players switching ends after half time. It took me a match or two to get the hang of things, but on my third attempt I very nearly managed to win, but I messed things up near the end. This very odd game is a lot of fun to play even just up against the CPU, but up against another human player it would be a fantastically fun time. While there isn't really a whole lot to the graphics, the main sprites are very nicely drawn and animated, and they make good use of high res mode. There is a decent title tune, but once we get into the game proper there is no music to speak of, just the sound of the ball boing around and the two players clonking each other with their bats. I had never heard of this game until a few years ago when Rob O'Hara did an episode of Sprite Castle all about it. If you don't already listen to that or watch it on YouTube, then I heartily recommend that you check it out, as Rob does a, a really excellent job of explaining in depth how each of his chosen games work and demonstrating them to you. Before I move on, let's see what Zap made of it. All three reviewers essentially said the same thing and match what I said too. The game is simply okay in single player but truly shines with someone else to play against. They also mentioned the price and how it is too high for what the game is. I think that's debatable really. If you spent a tenner on this and then didn't play it much because you didn't have anyone to play it with, then sure that criticism makes sense. But if you have siblings or friends that you can play it with, then I can easily see the game offering you many hours of fun and being value for money. So I, it would really depend on your situation. Zap gave the game an overall score of 79%, which I think is a bit on the stingy side. I really enjoyed playing Bounces for the short time I spent with it, and I can see it becoming a bit of a keeper. The other game on side A is called Flick Flack and it is a puzzle game where you use a diamond shaped bat to deflect tiles that are coming onto the screen from a particular direction, be it from the top on level 1 or from the left on level 2 and so on. Your task is to knock the tiles so that they change direction and collect on the sides rather than going off the screen. If you miss too many then it is game over. By matching coloured tiles on the side of the level you destroy them and earn points. Once you have stored or matched a target amount of tiles then you move on to the next stage. I was able to grasp what I needed to do here quite quickly, but actually being able to do it with any skill was another thing entirely. I struggled with the controls and the collision detection felt a bit finicky too, making it extremely challenging to play with any degree of skill. I would probably get better with a bit of practice, but I find the game a bit frustrating to be honest. The one time I did beat a level, I did so more just by storing so many tiles that I bu built a wall across the screen, rather than scoring any points. It's an interesting game, but I don't really like it very much, I'm afraid. This is another game that was given away for the first time on the tape, so I don't have a zap review to compare it against. Let's move on to side B.
Next up is a game that I have covered once before, as it has also been on one of the Commodore format power packs. Southern Bell is a train simulator that focuses solely on the journey between London, Victoria and Brighton on a steam locomotive. It sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? But I find it quite interesting, especially as half of my regular commute from my office to my home is on the same route. While Battersea Power Station is made up of jagged black polygons in the game, you can still tell what it is supposed to be. The whole thing chugs along at quite a glacial pace, however. There are a number of different options, including a training mode that simplifies the controls down to slowing down and speeding up, a fast mode with no stops, a full timetable with all the in-between stations and passengers on board, and a problem route where you will be beset with all sorts of different technical difficulties with the train. The game seems quite complex at first, but compared to other simulation games like Flight Sims, it is actually quite simple and accessible. It can be quite relaxing to play, but the visuals and the speed that the game runs really haven't aged well. An interesting curio of a bygone age. Zap awarded the game an overall score of 88% and concluded things with... A superb simulation of a dull subject. While they said that they could tell the designer had a huge amount of knowledge on the subject, the lack of freedom compared to flight simulators, with the whole thing being quite literally on rails, meant that it became boring quite quickly. Our final game for this episode is yet another game created with Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit called Outtake 2, from the same creator that gave us Shot Away a few episodes ago. This is another decent enough blaster with a similar monochrome style to Shot Away, with competently designed levels and enemy attack waves. The trouble is, I got pretty bored of these quite some time ago. They always feel quite restricted compared to a Shoot 'em Up programmed from scratch. Souk is a cool program and it's impressive that it has had such a long lifespan beyond its initial creation, but I don't find the games very interesting to play, unfortunately. I really hope it's the last time I have to say that in one of these videos, but I suspect it might not be. All in all, Bounces is the definite highlight for me. It's original, quick to learn and a lot of fun. I am not overly keen on any of the other games though I'm afraid. So that draws another episode to a close. Next week I'm going to be reviewing Ayudan Chronicles Rising for the Xbox Series X, though the game is also available on the PS4, PS5 and Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoy modern games and RPGs then do check it out. The next issue of Modern Zap is imminent as well, so I suspect I will have another episode of The Next Generation for you in a few weeks' time, instead of a regular episode. That means that the series will continue in a month with episode 22, so be sure to come back then. Join me again then for the next one, and in the meantime, take care. <laughs>